I'd like to show you a few more things with America's Most Haunted and the pin hex system in general. This is our SD card. So the system has a single SD card in it. And the SD card has two folders. It has DMD, which is the animations, and sound effects. Sound effects also include the music in the FZ folder. And we have the folders labeled in this way. This actually makes it really fast to access them. It uh, doesn't really use a file system. It just uh, finds the direct sectors. So in the DMD folder, uh, there's a few files down here at the bottom. There's video lists. This is just a list of all the, uh, oh, I guess it's coming down here. That's a list of all the videos. Then there's uh, this prop underscore seven hex. That's actually an EEPROM file for the video portion of our board. We have two processors on the pin hex system. We have a PIC32, which is the main logic. And then we have a parallax propeller, which does the audio and video. That's actually the same microcontroller I used on my Bill Paxton pinball machine. It's really good at doing multitasking things like audio and video. So if the version number of this file is higher than the version number in your game, the audio video kernel will auto update when you stick in the SD card. Let me show you. Without an SD card, you'll see either SFX error or DMD error. That's basically, uh, you know, it can't find the folders on the card because the card isn't there. Okay. All right. Um, I shouldn't do this, but I will anyway. Stick the card in. <clears throat> yeah. All right. I'm going to hit reset and it should auto program itself. There we go. So it's copying the hex file off of the SD card into the EEPROM right here. Now, the PIC32 actually also uses that EEPROM. It actually writes EEPROM through the propeller because the uh, removable EEPROM has more erase cycles than the simulated flash in the PIC32. And if the EEPROM ever did fail, you could just put a new one in. Here's the pin heck board. This is the programming port for the PIC32. It can also be used for serial communication. This switch here is the uh, serial UART or Bluetooth switch. This is a uh, Bluetooth module. It's optional. It costs about $25 for the module. You need to solder it in place. But if you put that in, you can use Bluetooth for serial communication such as with a tablet. But right now I'm going to do a demonstration just using the USB UART. I have a USB cable connected into my laptop and I'm going to use Termite, which is a serial program, to talk to it. Okay, COM4, baud rate is 115-200, append nothing, okay. All right, so, bring this up here so we can see it. I don't like using screen captures, so this is like <laughs> the best it's gonna get. All right, so I'm going to hit reset around the game. The game doesn't really give you a lot of serial messages by default. Okay, so there's, a, there's one thing here. It says type help for a list of commands. So every command you send has a bracket, and then, in this case, help, and then two exclamation points because it's a total of eight characters. Okay, now this returns all of the serial commands that I can type into the game. Um, and, you know, obviously these are, you're not sending binary data to the game, you're sending ASCII data. That's so, you know, you can, as a human, you can type in something. So let's say I want to disable the video attract mode, which is enabled by default. So E is the command, 96 is the item number. And then 000 is the parameter. Okay. Okay, now in the background you see the last video stopped and now it's just on the score. So now, if I want to test the video, it won't put extra stuff on it. So I can type V for video, 00, and then let's go with QA1, which I believe is one of the multi-ball videos. Okay, so we see the video running in the background. 
then it reverts back to score display. I could type E96001, that will re-enable a track mode. So if there's a, like a Bluetooth app on a tablet, that application would probably want to disable the video attract mode before you do any uh, testing. Uh, you can also play sounds. F for sound effects, 00, zero uh, AZZ is one off the top of my head. Okay. Now I have that turned down pretty low, but <laughs> it does work. Okay, uh, let's see what else we can do. Oh yeah, we can look at the switch data. Uh, wait, let me just get the commands again. Help, help, I need somebody. Oh great, now I'm gonna get sued by uh, who's left. Uh, Paul McCartney and uh, Ringo Starr are gonna sue me. I think Paul McCartney has all the rights though. Okay, toggle serial stream of human readable switch data. All right, so let's do E98000. Okay, now these are the switches. See how they're, they're in binary? Here you can see the balls in the trough. This is the cabinet switch right there. So I like pushing the flipper button makes that go. And yeah, we have other, other switches here too. Okay, let's disable that. We'll just send the command again. All right, let's get our help command back. All right, yeah. Now what the Bluetooth app will do is it'll use this E99000 command. E99. Zero, zero, zero. Now it sent back um, <clears throat> it sent back a binary number, which doesn't really look like anything to us, but you know, to an application, you know, it will make sense. All right. So now that we have that working, let's try this via Bluetooth. Oh wait, before we do the Bluetooth thing, I want to show you one more thing. Um, okay, there. I'm in the service menu in the game. And uh, I can continue to send commands, even though I'm in the service menu. <laughs> oh look, I'm playing a video on top of the service menu. And then, once I push a button, we'll be back in the service menu. You shouldn't do that, but you can. So, you know, you could have one person testing lights with the service menu while someone else tests the solenoids using a remote terminal. So I have this uh, really narrow depth of field here for the focus, sorry about that, but I want you to be able to see the tablet screen. So this tablet is connected now to the Bluetooth module. I flip the switch on the PCB, which basically turned the serial UART from the USB chip to Bluetooth, which means you could also program it over the tablet as well. So basically all our same commands work uh, let's see, it's a little harder to type on the tablet. Everything has to have this bracket, which basically lets it encapsulate the commands and know what's going on. Uh, let's see here. The Let's play another uh, one of the let's QA, no, QA3. Let's play another one of the multiball videos. Should work. Yep, there it is in the background. So obviously this text terminal on the tablet is pretty boring, but the thing you need to imagine is that we're going to be making an application for this. So yeah, I'm sending text commands here, but the application can send these commands internally. So we could have a switch matrix appear on the screen as a grid, and you could see switches light up as you're under the game. Like if you tilt up the play field, it's, you can't see the screen, so it's hard to debug. So you could take your tablet under your lifted play field be touching the switches with your finger and see it updated on your screen. Same thing with the lights. Um, let's see here. Let me just, let's see. L99000 should disable the light attract mode. Okay, yeah, so now the play field is not doing anything. So now I can, let's see. <laughs> These keyboards are not optimal for this. Light 63 to a brightness of 7. The lights are 0 to 7 in brightness. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you can see it, but that's the... Uh... All right, well, yeah, there's demon light. It is lit, because that's light number 63. So that was kind of my reason for giving this an optional Bluetooth module, is that, yeah, it's, sometimes it's really hard to test a game. Uh, I was working on my, my Attack from Mars the other day, and trying to see which one of the switch optos was busted and 
you have to, I was pushing the flipper button with a broom while I leaned over and looked at the screen. Uh, that's, it's kind of difficult. So that's the idea behind this tablet app. M for MOSFET. We don't use S because S is for servo. So you can control the servos too. MOSFET 21, which is probably one of the flippers, uh, 100 milliseconds. Oh, okay. I guess that one was the ball load, and if a ball is in the shooter lane when the game is turned on, it immediately kicks it out. All right, so yeah. That's just some more ways you can debug America's Most Haunted, or if you want to use the pin hex system for your own game, we put in all sorts of ways to see what's going on with microcontrollers. We don't have a PC in this, it's all microcontrollers. So I like microcontrollers, PCs are overkill.